I can lay you out and fill your mouth with your mother's feces, or we can talk. Literal exact a, words. Do you have a bag, my mother's feces? Yeah. yeah. Do you have a bag of everyone's mother's feces? Like, is that, yeah. is that a satanic power that you discovered? Like, you were just like, oh, I wish I had Dave's mom's shit right now. Ha <laughs> ha, look at that. Oh. Flashback to See, Viggo Mortensen scooping the shit out of an old lady. I did not think this through. I did not. <laughs> Awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, except when Eli just selects a perfectly good 90s movie with angels in it. I'm your host, Noah Illusions, <laughs> and sitting to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. You know what I'd like to do to help set the mood for this movie what's that i want to gently kiss the spaces between your knuckles is that cool <laughs> if i just do that right now for a second cool thank I you i was pretty sure you were going to go with an eli catchphrase right there so that was actually way better than i was expecting <laughs> speaking of which sitting 81 miles to my right is my bad friend eli bosnick eli i do not want to know what you want to do to set the mood for this movie <laughs> you never want to know what i want to do, do <laughs> i feel like you don't even read the suggestion box <laughs> so tell us heath in case people are convinced we're doing gay porn this week uh, well well yeah yeah no i'm not saying we're not i'm just asking what will we be breaking down today we watched the prophecy and apologize to everyone in advance for this, but uh, all you need to know <laughs> is that it stars Chris for walking. And I promise I won't do that again. It's, I got it out of my system. Everybody has to fucking do that. They're terrible at it, including me. I'm done. Oh, Sorry. I, not everybody. And Eli, <laughs> well, what do you think? Pretty good flick, huh? Oh, I <laughs> love it. Well... <laughs> oh, so good. Okay, wait, here we go. I gotta do catch, catchphrase. Well, if you love 80s hair and Native American spirit rituals, and I can't emphasize this enough, you're also a pedophile. You will love this movie. I think this is our first movie where a full grown adult open mouth kisses a child, right? Am I? The first one we reviewed, they, yeah. Yeah, they, they mix together in my head. <laughs> so, uh, I feel like you only added that pedophile line to make it awkward when I pointed out how much I fucking love this movie. It's not right. exclusive to who he described. That's uh, just that guarantees yeah, it. Oh, Some okay, other people no, also right. yeah, love exactly, this movie. Exactly. I also like 80s hair and Native American spiritual uh, <laughs> rituals. So, I, I, but I feel like, okay, this is a weird one for me because I, I really do love, love this fucking movie. And it feels like picking on this movie for being over the top or cheesy would be like criticizing Bugs Bunny cartoons for not looking realistic. You know, like that's <laughs> his arm lengths aren't correct for a rabbit. <laughs> This to me, okay, I, I don't know where it is for everybody else, for, but for me, this is the movie where Christopher Walken became a verb, right? To Christopher <laughs> Walken something became a thing in my head when this movie came Was out. Was this before or after the dead zone? I have no idea. The dead zone's right up there for Walken verbing. Also for me. How sure are we that Christopher Walken knew he was being filmed <laughs> during this movie? <laughs> <laughs> Answer for me, not him. <laughs> I've got you have to wonder if he just walks around every day doing that. Like, is he just like that? Does he just pause randomly while he's walking too, for no reason? I wonder. So I want to point out this is definitely the most successful at the theaters movie that we've ever uh, we've ever watched. Now it came out in like a September, so it's not that big a big a deal that it was number one in the box office when it came out. But I want to point out this was one of the 100 biggest box office earners of 1995, and it was just narrowly edged out of the top 90 by Devil in a Blue Dress and Pauly Shore's Jury Duty. It was that good. That is the <laughs> level of expertise we're talking about in this crazy fucking movie. <laughs> This is such a good movie. All right, is there anything you guys want? You guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Uh, yeah, I'm going to say best worst, wildly inappropriate timing for kissing several times. Like with best worst, second best like, worst, and third. Just now, when I kissed Noah's knuckle slats, that was better timing <laughs> than it. Like the whole movie is like, okay, done torturing you. Time to lean in for the kiss. No, sorry, sorry, I read that wrong. I read, I'm kissing you anyway, but I read it wrong. <laughs> 
Uh, can I go with best worst perching? <laughs> uh, so, as Noah has already indicated, there are some angels in this movie, and since they have wings and birds have wings, all the angel characters at one point or another in this movie <laughs> will perch for an unrealistic amount of time. <laughs> but like, instead of sitting in a chair, always they will perch. <laughs> On chairs yep. throughout this movie. Well, it's not just that they per they perch like on unrealistically small objects that wouldn't hold their weight and and stuff like that. They the head of a pin and stuff like that. But the thing is, is like they 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 try to play this as this ominous weird thing that the angels do, but it looks like they're on a squatty potty the whole time, <laughs> over and over. Not much is less intimidating than a man perching, <laughs> right? <laughs> See, now I was going to go with best worst choice of sensation to make sinister, right? Okay, so the, the, a lot of this movie involves the angels sniffing things out. Apparently, angels have great <laughs> senses of smell. No actor will ever be capable of ominous sniffing. If Walken <laughs> can't do it, it cannot be done. <laughs> Fifth sense. Smell. <laughs> <laughs> It's always sunny. All right. Well, we've got to get through this good movie before we can make it to the direct -to video sequels, I suppose. So we're going to keep the break brief. And when we come back, we'll dive into all the liberally punctuated overacting that is The Prophecy. Where am I? We've got a new arrival. Hey, man. How's it going? Oh, who? Who are you? Us? We're the leftovers. I'm last week's pizza. And this here is four months ago's Chinese food. Well... What are you doing here in the fridge? Oh, I've got some bad news for you, kid. It looks like the humans just got Blue Apron. B -b 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 Blue Apron? What's that? Oh, it's the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country. Well, that doesn't sound too bad for us leftovers. It is, kid. It is. Blue Apron's mission is to make incredible home cooking accessible to everyone. And with the pre-portioned ingredients and easy-to-follow step-by-step recipes, they don't need to go rummaging around in the fridge for the likes of us anymore. What, what, what do you mean? All right, look, kid, your foil is still new. I get it. But trust me, when beef teriyaki stir fry with sugar snap peas and lime rice or crispy salmon and roasted potato salad with pickled mustard seeds and creme fraiche sauce are an option, ain't nobody interested in old Chinese food. Oh, no. Well, how do we stop it? Well... By making sure nobody, and I mean nobody, checks out this week's menu and gets their first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash godawfulmovies. They'll love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron, so we got to make sure they do not go to blueapron.com slash godawfulmovies. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Who's that? Oh, that, that, that's November salad. We don't talk about him. Gross. <laughs> I'm nervous. I'm sure it'll be fine. Hi, mm. thanks for waiting. Welcome to Prophecy School District. You guys must be uh, Heath and Eli. Yep, that's mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you've decided to put your child into our school. Yeah, thanks. All right, so here's the classroom. Uh, this is where grades kindergarten through 12 will learn all the subjects. Over wait, here... Um, sorry, sorry, wait. It's it's just one classroom? Uh-huh, yeah, the one classroom here. Uh, but how do you account for different learning levels? Yeah. yeah, that seems like a terrible waste of just all this space. Yeah, well, we needed a lot of space for, like, broken chairs and stuff behind chains. You know how it is. Uh, I, uh, sorry, you're the only teacher? Uh, and the principal, and the choir director, and the gym teacher, and the school nurse, uh, and the janitor. Pretty sure the you being the only adult in, in the building just makes, just makes the whole thing like a weird club for people to send their kids to. It's not yeah, that's, school. I, I don't think right? that counts as a school. Right. Well, yeah. I, 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 I see you're misunderstanding. I'm not the only adult. Oh, oh okay, really? You're... Yeah, yeah. Sometimes homeless people sneak in and kiss the children. Okay, we are done. We yep, are done. done. What? Mm -hmm. That's learning. <laughs> <laughs> hey, God Awful Movies listener. Do you love God Awful Movies? 
You bet your sweet mama jamma you do. And now's your chance to see the show live in a city near you. It's a lie. It's a lie. First up, our tickets to New York, Seattle, and Salt Lake City are still on sale, but grab them because they're going like hotcakes. That was a hot cake. In fact, we're selling so many tickets in the USA that we have to do a show on the other side of the planet just to keep the globe spinning. This November, we're going down under where we'll be doing a live show with Tom and Cecil of Cognitive Dissonance at Skepticon. That was a kangaroo. But hold your horses. Literally, because we're also coming to Austin, and we assume you guys have literal horses. But act fast. We've already sold hundreds of tickets to our live shows, and they're looking to sell out fast. So check the show notes for this episode. Grab your tickets and get ready to fuck your parents. Dude, what? God-awful movies live. Fuck your parents? I don't know, man. I ran out of stuff. It's the... I. Fuck your parents. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start this movie off with a giant This Movie is Too Good for Us red flag, namely a Miramax logo. <laughs> yeah. Turn and go the other way, guys. <laughs> and so we're getting this uh, this opening monologue from Eric Stoltz about the, the first angel war when the sky burned. And while, we're, while he's saying this in the voiceover, we're watching him look at a singed angel archaeopteryx thing. Yeah. If you had always pictured Lucifer's fall as a wily e. Coyote-esque splat on the ground, <laughs> this movie really brings this to life for you. Yeah, this is an interesting uh, fact we learn about the Angel Wars. Apparently, Eric Stoltz, the angel, watched Lucifer like like he said, like die in a skydiving accident. Yeah. He just like <laughs> stood there and watched Lucifer decompose into a skeleton in the middle of the desert. Perched well, I, I, there and why? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it sounds like something from Chris Walken's diary in real life. Yeah, no, but see, no, <laughs> I got the yet, impression but. that with it, this was just like you know on the battlefield that this wasn't Lucifer specifically, but that that is what he was talking about. So, and then we go into the uh, the creepy church stuff opening again, two for two. Yeah, right. <laughs> but this one, like at a certain point, it just gives up on creepy and it's just like, ooh, a finial. Because, you know, like <laughs> at first it's showing the creepy stuff and then it's just like, yeah, those are also carved. Right. One of the carved faces is exactly a Chucky doll. <laughs> Chucky, like, <laughs> like exactly. Like, was he in the Bible? Chucky? <laughs> I think he was. I'm pretty sure zoom in on a pottery class. My son signed me up for this. <laughs> that's, Ran out no, of that's also happening in the church right now. <laughs> Um. Yeah, but what, what what we're really seeing here is priests getting their kid fucking cards. Uh, a bunch yeah. of uh, a bunch of uh, would be priests going in to take the whatever it is that you take to become a priest officially. Mm -hmm. My note here is: look at that line of gay guys. I mean, they're actors, so they're not priests, but still gay guys. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah, stands. Lo no lots stands. Of, lots of kissing in their graduation ceremony from <laughs> police academy. Whatever they're doing. Yeah. Yeah, my first note on this scene was just, hey, it's the guy from The Prophecy. Um, <laughs> but, and, and by the way, with all the rumors about priests, maybe lose the ceremony based on kissing and push-ups, because there's push-ups in it, too. <laughs> well, yeah, because yeah. they have to kiss the floor, and you know that the older priests go the night before and piss on that spot. You know they do. <laughs> yeah, I, I just picture Archer. This is how you get pedos. You want pedos? This is how you get pedos. <laughs> So a, a couple of the priests come up and they kiss the floor and they do their Jesus, Jesus thing and they get their priest card. Um, but then our main character comes up, Thomas. Is he Thomas or is the angel Thomas? He is Thomas. I oh, let me the tell you what this movie is not good at, despite Noah's protestations, telling you what everyone's goddamn motherfucking name is. <laughs> His name is Thomas. They say it in the opening scene when we meet him. They say, Thomas, come forward. And he goes, who, I me? I'm Thomas. Confused. I found okay. myself confused. <laughs> so, yeah, so he, he heads up to try to do his push-up of righteousness. Then he starts having flashbacks to when he fucked a bird lady on acid? Is that what it is? <laughs> I mean, I get that. Like, I I've get been that. there, Thomas. Yeah, we've all been there. You got to make sure Weird. those flashbacks come back at the worst times. <laughs> right. Yeah, he gets the tip, doesn't like how it feels, um, and decides he's not going to be a priest, I guess. 
Also, mm. just real quick, how did Catholicism decide on that miter hat? It's well, fucking see, that, crazy. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought maybe that was it. Maybe he walked up there and he says, oh, fuck, they're going to want me to wear that hat. I better pretend I have a flashback or something here. It look like a grown man got a toy hat from a Happy Meal every time I work. <laughs> Ridiculous. At Benihana. No, I mean, it's my birthday, but I'm, I'm fine. I mean, I'm, I'm at Benihana, so I'm obviously not fine as like a human being. But I don't want to make it worse. And that's how you make it worse. <laughs> So now we cut to some time later where he's a roof looker. Now, look, I personally <laughs> have never gone to the top of a building to dejectedly look out slightly to the right of the camera. And Hollywood would tell me that I don't know real pain because of that. <laughs> apparently Obviously not. I mean, I've gone up on a roof to do drugs. Well, right. But that's like, not. Yeah. No, that's just where you get beat up by Batman. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> Get to third base and do drugs are the only reasons for a roof. So I don't really understand what he's doing up here. Like he's smoking also, on the sidewalk. Batman. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no. Right. It's, and, and then so he's like looking out over the morning and it's all like dejected and misty or whatever. And then some guy comes up and he goes like, "Hey, you're not supposed to be here." And he pulls out his badge. And he's like, "I'm a priest cop." And he's like, "Oh, I guess you can just go wherever the fuck you want then." Is yeah, there are no rules. That's... Okay. Welcome to the nineties. And his little internal monologue here is that he lost his faith because he saw too much. And I just mm -hmm. want to throw out there, um, that's not how believing in things work. Like, <laughs> nope. I never pulled back from a telescope and was like, well, fuck stars. I don't know why I was... I could see Jupiter's moons and shit. I don't have any... <laughs> Isaac Jupiter Newton's just has like... 18 moons. <laughs> Isaac Newton's just like counting numbers. It keeps going after a thousand. This is fucking ridiculous. No, <laughs> no. really, math. So really? yeah, you know, religious movies in general have to kind of play like deciding what you do and don't believe about the world is tricky. So yeah, they have to start that early. So okay, so he wanders into his apartment, and wouldn't you know it, an angel is there perched on the back of his chair like my fucking cat. <laughs> this is how my cat sits when I try to work, but that's what he's doing. Right. And your cat fails, by the way. Like, he's just like, all right, yeah. here I am. Oh, God, look at my butthole. Bam. <laughs> oh, I'm going right. to lie down here. I blame you for this. I'm a cat. <laughs> I blame you. Ugh. I hate Italian food. I'm like, a, I'm like a constant person who just ate Italian food. <laughs> he really is. You so, have bangs and a mullet? What's going on? <laughs> what year is this? Are you 95? All right. Yeah. Yeah. We were just getting out of the mullets back then. Yeah. So he comes in and Eric Stoltz, the angel, is perched on the back of his chair. So, of course, he takes out his gun and he's like, what the fuck are you doing about to shit off the back of my chair? And he's just like, calm down. This is still the opening scene. You don't even know if I'm a bad guy yet. And I get it. <laughs> Trust me. I have been perched ready to shit off the back of someone's chair when they pull a gun on me more times than I'd like to confess on this podcast. People overreact. How, how many times would you like to confess on this podcast? <laughs> well, just wait until you check your chair. <laughs> oh, shit. You say he just doesn't want to confess yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, also, this is where we learn because they're the two of them are talking the angel and the cop and they're having like crazy heaven talk at gunpoint. Um, and this is where we learn that Thomas, the cop, wrote the book on violent angels, like literally <laughs> wrote a book about it. This is thesis. Is that a thing? Do you do you write like a doctoral the theology school? I'm thesis? sure you do. I'm sure. Go that, fuck that, yourself. Yeah, right. Get a real fucking educate. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. <laughs> And Thomas is just like, eh, what are you going to do? A guy's impossibly perched on your desk. He goes, <laughs> didn't take anything. It's fine. This scene will never come back or make more sense than it does now. It's just, yeah, this is movie is beginning. Yeah. Okay. So now we get some evil music and we get an alleyway and we get an ugly angel smelling his way through the city. Uh, yeah. John Lennon's tag team partner. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> in the WWE. And John Lennon, the Beatle was in that. Also yeah. perching. 
Yeah, yep. Yeah. And it, now this is a fucking awesome shot. Like as, as far as perch shots go, this might be the coolest perch shot ever. So he walks into the alley. He's like, "Yep, this is the right place." So he perches on this little stool, and then we see that like he's been there all night. Like it immediately switches to day, and he's just been sitting in the exact same spot. And yeah, I, I that's wanted weird. I wanted so badly when he stands up to be like, "Oh my fucking thought." Ah, sorry. Give me a second. <laughs> oh shit. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, I was perched there for like 12 hours. Oh. <laughs> Ow. Just Whoa. there all night. Spider-Man keeps swinging over. Oh, you're going to you take that perch all night? No, it's fine. <laughs> I like to perch on stuff. Too, so. So, I was going to go right here. Usually Whatever. we kind of cycle around. We have a, like a thing. We have a system. A 45 right here still? It's like it's 12 show. hours, no, man. No shit. All right. Wow. That's what are you fun. doing? He's got a ticket on him when he wakes up. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking bullshit. He's like checking the signs. Uh, what does that fucking mean? Except Sunday. Because Jesus doesn't like you to park on his birthday. What the fuck is this? Uh, the tap on the window? Fuck. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to put it in my glove compartment and pretend it's not there. That's what I'm going to do. So, by the way, just, been here before. Is, is balancing on stuff like, is that like an angel power? Is that mentioned anywhere? Yeah, I mean, because in the statues, they're always perching like birds yeah I'm just, I, I'm just picturing a teacher walk into a class of angels they're all sitting normally and she's like oh settle down settle down they all start doing weird squats on their desk all right sorry ready for class i'm doing a cirque du soleil handstand on another man so now we cut upstairs apparently he's waiting this angel's been waiting for eric stoltz to get home so eric stoltz gets home throws his keys on the desk and then he sniffs into the air and I get a preview of how the penguin pants thing is going to play out in the end. Yeah. <laughs> angel fight. And I now, want to say, <laughs> an angel fight that ends, it is a bold move to throw someone out a window by their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is exactly what happens in this fucking scene. He stabs him through the neck with a broken window, pushes his eyes out, throws him out of a window where he is then smashed into by a car that runs him into a wall who okay i get that that would hurt or kill you or whatever but <laughs> who was driving the murder car did he set Through that up alley. like just some guy alley. just parked yeah. there like oh is that a fallen angel run you over i'm a stranger <laughs> had the angel not fallen at that time that guy was just apparently planning to run his car into the wall of this alley. <laughs> yeah, he was just on his way to that oh, wall. Honey, you wouldn't believe my ride home. I'm about to smash into a wall like normal at 5.30 in the alley, and this angel goes bald right in front of me. It's fucking ridiculous. Oh, that's terrible. These angels, they're all over the place. That's the problem. So, <laughs> Trump's going to fix it. <laughs> He's gonna build a dome. There are bad so, angels. I'm, there's there's some bad angels out there. They've got no eyes. Their bones are like fetus bones. They're bad people. They're coming in. Someone's kissing our children. <laughs> Who's doing the kissing? I'm gonna make heaven pay for the dome. So then we get Thomas showing up to the scene of the crime afterwards, right? Like checking on the dead angel body that has mm -hmm. been murdered. They like cause of death like how nine not ten <laughs> right. i think and by the way so they, they do that like cop greeting each other thing do they all do this with like a string of offensive slurs to each other like bastard <laughs> sob kike negro <laughs> all right that's enough, that's enough. hey, straight white hey just <laughs> yeah. one cop doesn't know that that's part of the ritual just like oh it looks like oh. Jew Jew jewerson's here what i'm gonna get you fired what? god damn it <laughs> <laughs> you got to read your training packet, kid. This is how... God damn. <laughs> it's fine. Let's go to HR. So, and I wanted so badly when Christopher Maloney comes over to just be like, hey. <laughs> he looks just like... That. He sure does. I wanted him to be like, hey, this angel looks like a rubber doll. We sure someone <laughs> didn't kill a real, real <laughs> fake rubber doll. <laughs> and then you got that uh the other like older beat cop next to him just cracking wise the whole time he's like oh just real quick uh the corpse he's missing one or two things though 
His eyes. Like, it's okay. a boom. All right, man. Can we just a boom. talk normal? Just tell me what's fucking <laughs> no, happening. No, shut up. This cop likes to raise one or two things. Two yeah. things. This cop likes lines. to bring some comedy to his work. That's good. I, just, <laughs> I feel like that would be weirder than an SVU case. Just like, uh, let's just say she won't be wearing white on her wedding day. Seriously, Steve, you need to stop. All right, that, really? <laughs> oh, God. Stop, Come on, man. man. <laughs> it's too far. It's too far. Jesus. I'm sorry. I'm trying to Re- have a good time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for trying to make a positive work environment. <laughs> so, All right, red light bulb. Just wrap it up, man. It's, good. it's a fucking crime scene. What's so the deal upstairs. with dead babies? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen this? Have you heard about this? <laughs> Son of Sam. <laughs> so, how many people Siren did Sam goes kill? Off. <laughs> So they head upstairs <laughs> to check out the crime scene. Um, and of course, this is where they find Thomas's book in the apartment where the struggle happened. Right. Well, he picks up a newspaper. Yeah. And there's an entire article circled in big red marker. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, why would you, why would you ever need to circle an entire newspaper story of your own in red? Like, <laughs> Hey man, if a detective ever shows up here after I murder someone, he's gonna have no idea what I've been working on. <laughs> Hand me a, like a marker. No, no, the red, like the a big red sharpie, pen, thick, a big felt come on. pen. Give me the thick tip. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Perfect. Right, and then so, with calligraphy. So it's the right. obituary of this general, and that's gonna come back. And uh, and comedy cop sort of leaves him there again alone, and it's just like, all right, don't forget to tip the maid. I got a million of them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I and got so some now our he- jokes in Times Square to make. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus, what? That was just a drunk so, guy. Everyone was freaking out. Oh, what was it? It was a drunk guy. It happens all the time. Yeah. Everyone yep, outside of me- New York cared. No one in New York did. Yeah, right, right, exactly. It's like, oh wow, some pedestrians got ran over in New York. What? <laughs> Who'd have thunk? Um, and so, okay, so now we get, and, and now the, the cop looks out the window and slightly off to the right. So that means the scene is allowed to end here. <laughs> um, we're going to get a lot of that. And then we get this creepy showing up in town sequence, except it's not creepy. It just has creepy music. Like if you swapped out the music, this could definitely be the, he did make it home for Christmas establishing shot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we're, we're going to a choir recital in Chimney Rock, Arizona. Right. And we learned that this. This town is run down and abandoned, except for their giant, fully stocked children's choir. And the, they're the, amazing. Yeah, they're great. They're doing Ave Maria. It's fucking beautiful. And uh, we learned that Candyman Lady is their choir director. Yeah. Now, uh-huh. I don't know if this actress has a name, but she's Candyman Lady. Okay, sure. And now <laughs> I've said it twice, chick- so I won't say it again. <laughs> <laughs> she's the chick from the prophecy to me. So, yeah, so we get that. And at the same time, we're watching Eric Stoltz, who is wandering into a wake where, like, it's just him and the corpse. And I wonder, like, do you make small talk at that point? <laughs> I don't, so. I don't know. Uh, yeah, and why we, it, it's funny because I'm thinking, man, what is the etiquette when you're the first guy at the wake? And then he French kisses the dead guy. And I'm like, OK, well, that's. Well, yeah, you want small talk at that point. <laughs> if that's what you're going to do. I <laughs> loved this movie. <laughs> I, I just felt really very confusing... validated by this movie. I just want to say. <laughs> I was having a really confusing reaction to this, uh, sexually speaking. <laughs> so... I mean, Eric Stoltz, old man's corpse, you got to weigh it. <laughs> <So>... <laughs> he looks like a good kisser. No, he does. He does. He looks like a tender lover. Eric Stoltz, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> So, yeah, while he's kissing a dead guy, we, we cut to the after choir party so that uh, female lead can talk to lonely dejected girl from act three um, gonna... and little and the little girl can't decide if this scene is supposed to be creepy or not yeah she like has psychic visions but also kind of doesn't because she's like oh someone is here and she's like who and she's like ha, i will get cake before you and it's like this is a weird you gotta pick a <laughs> kind of kid you are <laughs> when she went to run for the cake, I wanted her to get side tackled by he too slow fucker Gary in your face. Just me, Joe Green. Whore, 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 whore. Hold you down and eat it right in your face. <laughs> no lines. Choo choo. So- <laughs> 
So we get uh, we get that. We've established those characters now, very important. And then we get Eric Stoltz breaking into some rat-infested place, all like creeping and sick or something now. Hey, he shouldn't have eaten that soul. It was expired. Zane, yeah. you could be a cop. You could be a police officer <laughs> with a sense of humor like that. <laughs> thank you so much for coming. Uh, thank you to a tribe called Quest. <laughs> It's been an amazing <laughs> so, week. <laughs> so then we cut to the morgue. This is an interesting scene. So Thomas, the cop, is checking out the dead guy that that from the place with his book. And we get this very bizarre description of the body from the coroner. Yeah, wait, um, again, that description is not... It's very clearly a rubber doll. Just want to throw that out again. <laughs> he does not diagnose rubber doll itis. I mean, it's practically rag. They might as well have just had a raggedy Andy on the table and been like, oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, but he does get diagnosed as a, a full grown adult aborted fetus who, can- who never had eyes. Yeah. Is that what happens? The, uh-huh. the chemistry confirmed that? Guys, I'm pretty sure Carly Fiorina just saw the movie Prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> He's kicking and screaming. Screaming. Someone throws. Yeah. Do you know at Planned Parenthood, they grab your baby by its eyes and they smash it through a window? <laughs> Do you know who was in you know who was in that car waiting in the alley? Planned Who's Parenthood. <laughs> George Taylor. So also, okay, so the coroner, now this is, what we have to establish is that this is very clearly not a normal human body he's dealing with, right? He's like, yeah, he was born with no eyes. His blood has weird chemistry, like a, like a fetus's blood. His bones have no growth rings. He's a hermaphrodite, blah, 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 blah. And they're, and, but, but they play every one of these like a zinger. He's like, you, you know, he keeps like, oh, look at this, a dick in a, in a vagina over here. You know, can you believe this? Dickery, dickery, doc. Yeah, it's it's, like, it's a nice 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 environment. You guys are being jer- you're the jerks. You're the jerks. These are the ones just trying to have a good time, try to try to enjoy themselves. It's a serious job. They bring some levity to it. You guys are the weird ones. Yeah. Also, <laughs> by the way, they they do not show us the penis vagina combo, and I was incredibly angry at the movie at this point. Yeah. Right. I just mean, it's a rubber the doll. Combo. They they might as well. Who doesn't want to see what a dick and a vagina look like next to each other? And then we get the angel's Bible, but I want to say it's amazing because they set the pattern. He goes, you know, this guy's blood, blood of an aborted fetus. You give this guy's bones, bones of an aborted fetus. You see this guy's book. I wrote in my notes, a book for an aborted fetus. (laughs) Everybody poops. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yeah. So this, this angel has a handwritten Bible. Um, from the the second century so apparently god like had him each copy it down you know they had a whole thing uh apparently god also agreed with that exact series of books in that exact same order that that roman council came up with centuries later i wanted it to be entirely different than the bible we know just like what the fuck is judah (laughs) the shepherd what is this yeah pope's got a lot of stuff (laughs) Yeah, but his Bible, it's not exactly the same, though. It does include the deleted scenes. Uh, I really hoped it contained a gag reel as well. Moses, Moses, come out to the mount. Come up to the mount. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) Take that again. (laughs) God, why hast thou forsaken for... Ah, God, I'm sorry. Line? (laughs) Boom's in the shot. Just behind Jesus. So the coroner just (laughs) (laughs) gag reels are fun. (laughs) Yeah, they are. So now it's time to go read the Bible, right? Because it is a Christian movie, apparently. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And we learned that there was a second war in heaven. And I just want to say, dude, if there are Nazi angels in this second war, I am 100% (laughs) in. You're going to love the sequels. Yeah, also there was a symbol on the dead body's neck that turns out to be the symbol of Uziel, minion of Gabriel. Yeah, good thing he has, like, the entire rankings of the angel army just, like, in symbology on his <laughs> desk. Yeah, exactly. He wanted a flashback to Uziel dropping out of high school to join the angel army. His mom's freaking out. He's like, it's fine, it's fine. I'm doing it to pay for college. <laughs> angel college you're not gonna go to angel college i might <laughs> now i can if i want to 
I just got released from jail. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, so he looks at that. He's looking through the symbol book, and he goes, he goes, uh, minion of Gabriel. And then he turns to Gabriel, and he goes, looks up at the screen, he goes, Gabriel. And that's still echoing in your ears when we cut to Christopher, Christopher fucking Walken. Walken. Walken, looking amazing <laughs> and silly. <laughs> Oh, Absolutely. Yeah, no, he's got a helmet of slicked black hair oh, going here. It's beautiful. He looks like Nick Cage lost a few horcruxes, but in like <laughs> the best way. It's fantastic. And he knew, right? Like, he is the only one in this movie who seems to have known the whole time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know his agent was like, okay, so you're... <laughs> here's what they want you to be. You want They want you to be Gabriel the Angel, <laughs> but you taste <laughs> blood and have... Undead, I'm in. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm already on set. How? I didn't tell you where it is. I just it sniffed. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Speaking of which, yeah, that's what it, that's what we're gonna get. He bursts into the crime scene where Simon, uh, the uh, Eric Stoltz's character, killed the uh, Uziel, and he has to go sniffing around. There's some blood on the table, so he has to. Sample that with his tongue Lick in a cunnilingus fashion. Ah. <laughs> and his lower lip instantly gets like five herpes. Yeah, the next right? shot. It's uncanny. Yeah. Occupational hazard for blood liquor detective angels, <laughs> apparently. What are you going to do? That was our canceled ABC pilot. We don't like to talk about it, but blood liquor. <laughs> we had a whole arc going, but they, it didn't get picked up. We don't want to talk about it. All right. If blood we hit the, the cocaine... Patreon goal, that's next. Yeah, there you go. They're there all you go. cocaine Patreon goals. <laughs> and apparently, <laughs> he has tongued Simon's bloody asshole at some point because he licks the blood and he's going like, oh, it's Simon. <laughs> How do you, you guys know each other in weird ways. <laughs> You're and saying honestly, you couldn't tell the difference between me and Heath's blood? I'll give you a hint. One of ours <laughs> would come out of the test tube and one of ours you'd have to slap the back according to State Farm. <laughs> 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 was he not making jello no that's just my blood <laughs> how do you not eat meat <laughs> I'm just gonna do it like ketchup with a knife hit the, hit the side hit the 57, <laughs> hit the 57. yeah you got it <laughs> year old <laughs> and honestly it feels like the, the whole scene with the lady it feels like the director is about to be like alright uh, hey Chris why don't you taste a dab of the blood off the table with your finger? Walker's like, already ahead of you, licking the table. Way ahead of <laughs> He's you. like, I was already licking this when I came in. So glad my character was supposed to do this. So now we head back to that school where they we've got the kids now breaking into abandoned scary place to play hide and seek. <laughs> it is a crazy storage room or whatever it is. There's like trash can fires and like Banksy doing graffiti and there's rubble. Like the rubble. school is saving yeah. rubble in this room and locking it to, to prevent people from stealing the rubble. My rubble collection. I like right. it. And they're playing hide and go seek, but this movie doesn't know how hide and go seek works because the little girl like opens her eyes and then she goes, I know you're here. And it's like, yeah, that's what hide and seek is. What are you doing? Yeah, that is... <laughs> I'm not going to feel bad when you get eaten in a second. You can't just be like, <laughs> right. I know you're here. That's not. <laughs> yes, everyone's here. It's where in the. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, no, I was like, you're in the school. I found you. Um, maybe that's what she was going for. <laughs> so he, he she, the little girl accidentally comes across Eric Stoltz, the sick angel who is hiding under the desk. Um, and. This is where this is this is where the movie probably gets its creepiest, and where I most understood why Eli insisted on doing this movie. Mm -hmm. We're doing it again <laughs> next week. <laughs> <laughs> Same movie. <laughs> so now we cut to my apartment. My apartment. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't going to say it, but yep. Yeah, it's it's. You got uneaten pizza. You got cigarette butts everywhere. You got a noose. I thought it might be Chris Cornell's hotel room. Oh, uh, Jesus. Too soon. <laughs> that was fucking two he's, days. Whatever. He's a football yeah, player. Yeah, no, and, and it's we're not recording even early. This is and like a week yeah, ahead. Right, no, by then it won't be too days. soon anymore. Yeah, exactly. He's a football player who killed himself so his daughter could have his inheritance money. <laughs> nope. Nope. So, yeah, so the... the <laughs> Well, we're, we're meeting uh, Jerry here. This is a guy who committed suicide, but Gabriel decided to un 
die him real quick. Or so, it's it's kind of convoluted. But a guy who almost dies wound up being Gabriel's supernatural undead lackey. Yeah, yeah, and- Jerry. <laughs> His name's Jerry. Like Jerry the angel. What bad angel? What is assistant he? to the angel? Assistant to the Some original assistant angel. To okay. the angel. Yeah. And here's the crazy thing. Like uh, this takes a while for the movie to explain, but Christopher Walken Gabriel just like goes and wakes up almost dead people and then like uses them because he doesn't know how to drive and doesn't want to do his dry cleaning and shit. Like, I feel like at some (laughs) point he'd have like an HR meeting with God and he's like, so, I mean, I really gave you that power for like decimating (laughs) Egypt and, um, you know, there's Grubhub now catch an Uber. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? I'm getting a lot of complaints. Yeah. (laughs) So he's sending Jerry as lackey to the to the uh, police office, uh, police station to steal back the evidence um, that they got from Uziel. But meanwhile, down at the crime lab, Thomas and the coroner are chatting, and it turns out they checked, and that Bible is like true. They checked with the science. <laughs> On the Bible. Yeah, the science. Lee Strobel walks in. It's it's the only copy of this we've ever seen, but we've seen zero that say this is a fake Bible. So, So, yeah, right. There's a pile for each. The real pile is infinitely bigger. So, there you go. (laughs) It's real. And basically, what we learn is that the cause of the second angel war was humans and that God loved humans. But wasn't that the cause of the first war? Wasn't the that's whole where, thing? That's where I read in the Quran wasn't, over and over wasn't, and over. Wasn't Satan like, hey, how come you made rapist creatures? And, and God was like, don't tell me what to do. And he was like, this seems like a bad idea. And someone in Bronze Age was like, should we make our guy seem so much less logical than the bad guy? And they were like, shut up, Dave. <laughs> Well, but they, and this is a problem that continues to this day, right? Like, cause the coroner, as he's explaining, as, as Thomas is explaining this as second angel war, the coroner goes, why wouldn't God just get rid of the bad angels? And the cop goes, I don't know, but kind of fucks up the plot in three major world religions if we dwell on it. So let's ignore that question and move on to the next one. Yeah, exactly. I wanted him to turn a page in the Bible and it was a pair of penguin pants and then I would get it. I would send Heath to hell right now is what I'm saying. If I could, if I could throw him onto a spear and leave him there in a desert for Forever, I would. <laughs> <laughs> now, meanwhile, Seawalks is breaking into the morgue. Yeah. And his way of breaking into the morgue is phenomenal. He goes down to the morgue and the guard's like, hey, man, you can't. And he's like, I'm Christopher Walken. And so he just sits down. He's like, all right, man, you are Christopher <laughs> no, Walken. No, you are. You are Christopher Walken, very clearly. Yeah, and he's got to go into the morgue and like sniff around to find Uziel's body. More ominous sniffing. Yeah, the, they focus heavily on balancing and smell stuff in this movie. A yeah. whole lot of that. Big, yeah. big percentage. Big percentage. Yeah. I really want to see some clips of this angel war. It's just angels squatting and sniffing at each other <laughs> super hard. <laughs> snarling. Dude, I will sniff the fuck out of you. It's like Pug a Palooza with angels. <laughs> angels are healthier than that. Well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, they that's are. true. Yeah, so <laughs> so apparently Christopher Walken's here to perform the last rites on the angel. Where do angels go when they die? I, anyway, so he pulls them out Whoa, of the yeah, you right. Just blew my mind. Yeah, where do they go? So super. He heaven. pulls the uh, yeah, exactly right, right. There's a second <laughs> level. He pulls the angel out, lays him on the floor for some reason. I wanted Christopher Walken to be like he always loved floors. <laughs> So he he, he pours some holy water or something on the angel and he walks away. Now, we have to do the whole the body catches fire as he walks away thing, but it's Christopher fucking walking. So he has to do that. Kiss his finger, shoot it with a gun, and then it catches on fire. thing. So cool. Fun fact from the IMDb trivia. Christopher Walken actually just has that power. Wasn't scripted or anything. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he just lights stuff on fire by doing that to it. He's that fucking hey man, cool. Do you know why all these cameras are following you? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I was just walking. None of my business. <laughs> so, so now we head back to the school and nobody knows where Mary is. And as soon as I heard that, I instinctively checked Eli's angle tracker. When I, but he was at he was in his place. He was at his apartment. So we need a paper good. clip. So, 
So the teacher has to go get Mary because one of the kids is like, oh, we were playing hide and seek in the creepy abandoned part of the school. It's like, wow, why do we keep that around Check for the you? rubble room. This? Yeah, shit. No, we, we asked a bunch of podcasters. Room. They said it was fine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so she goes into the abandoned part of the school and finds Mary, the little girl, sharing a soda with Simon. And she is incredibly casual about this homeless man sitting and hugging a small child. <laughs> There's a policy or something. I have gotten parking tickets with more anger than she directs this homeless man to let go of the child he's <laughs> sharing a milkshake with. <laughs> yeah. She's talking like she's, she did this yesterday and the day before with different homeless guys. And we actually learn later that like, yeah, that's like pretty standard. She has yeah. to like shoe homeless men out of the bed. Out of her room. school pretty regularly. <laughs> you guys just have never lived in a small town. So that's what it is. <laughs> Where all the jobs left all at once. Yeah, no, there was... The, honestly, the stuff with this school was like kind of realistic for the time. But yeah. Anyway, so like she tells Mary to go back to the class. Mary leaves. She tells the homeless guy he needs to get the fuck out. He's like, yeah, I'll get to it. And she's like, okay, cool. You look injured. He's like, yeah, I am. She's like, okay, well, you probably deserve it or something. Bye. <laughs> so she leaves <laughs> and the little girl shows back up. Right. And Simon's like, oh, I thought you left. And she says, I, I hid. I'm very clever. I'm like, you're still talking to the pedophile kid. Don't tell me how clever you are. <laughs> I hid so no one could help me. I am the smart one. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Finally, a movie that focuses some of the blame on child pedophile victims on Dude. the ch I'm just saying, I made it out fine. I lived next to a Catholic church my whole life and everyone was always like, don't go over there. And you know what I did? I didn't fucking go over there. <laughs> Another argument for helicopter parenting. <laughs> Always comes back to that. My so, yeah, so perfectly <laughs> conditioned butthole. I can, open a, I can open a beer bottle with this thing. <laughs> Definition of a perfect butthole. Yeah, no, that's thanks, Mom much, and Dad. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So now the the angel says to the little girl, like, I want to give you something very special. And I'm like, oh, like the jokes are getting pretty obvious here. And then he fucking starts rubbing her face and open mouth kisses her. Yep. Yeah. And all of our I, lines descend because all of our lines are like, oh, oh, hope he doesn't kiss her. Like, hey, these are the jokes to make on the show. And then we're all just like, ha ha. All right. OK, movie, movie, <laughs> movie, small child, movie. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, and yeah, so he's got the the soul from before inside of him, right? Right. Is that the what to know? The, he sucked the colonel's soul at the wake out into himself, and now oh, okay. he's blowing that back right, into the little so girl. So sort of understood this, yeah. And so he he's about to die, so he has to blow it out to the little girl, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm about to die, and I want to give you something very special, little girl." Eli gives the same basic speech all the time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but he never falls for it. it so. <laughs> Because he's seen prophecy. <laughs> so we head outside um, where the teacher's like, damn it, where the hell is Mary? And then she comes out and, of course, she's sick from all the bad soul kissing and needs to go home. Yeah, she says, did you eat something? And I wanted the little girl to be like, yeah, I feel like a dead cop's soul or a general <laughs> or something. I'm not. There's definitely a military organization taste to it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> <and you know. laughs> And I want to say, I've come up with weirder excuses than this to try to get out of school. So I, I hats off to her for actually making it work. So the teacher drives her home. Because fuck all the uh, other kids. This is, right. This is a full service fucking school. The teacher tucks her into bed when she gets her there. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess all the other kids could just read, see Dick run by themselves while she does that. Well, I mean, a few of those students were in their 50s, so somebody can take care yeah, of that. Yeah, that's true. Probably. <laughs> I'm going to get a degree in computers. No, you're not. You're going <laughs> to you know, die in the library, and they're going to have your picture up, and they'll be like, who's that? And they're going to be like, really? And I'm going to be like, don't be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to take fucking attendance. I'm going to school at the proper time as a child. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> So <laughs> the uh, so she she takes the kid home to her grandma and says, "Hey, she's not feeling very good. She was French kissing some homeless guy. Um, probably want to get her checked for STDs." And then she heads back, and she calls the police. Right? She's like, "Oh, hey, there's a bum upstairs," and the police are like, 
Hey, this is Chimney Rock, Arizona. We got some important shit. We can't we can't be handling every little homeless guy in every little school. Yeah, geez, lady, let the homeless guy hang out. What's he gonna do? Breathe a dead general's soul into her? <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Don't prank call this line. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, like, but now I, I will say, though, you know, when she calls the cops, they're like, hey, we got more important shit to worry about than pedophiles hanging out with kids. I'm like, this is a Christian movie. Nailed it. Yeah. So maybe. So now Thomas, we, we get to Thomas in the uh, corner finding Uziel's burned corpse. And his line here, his opening line is, reminds me of a snow angel. Yeah. It's a burned corpse that he's saying this about. <laughs> and, it, and he keeps saying it too. He's like, looks like a snow angel. Yeah, man, it does. Remember? <laughs> snow angels, you'd swing your arm. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, we know. Knows fucking snow angels. You no, know I mean, this? like when you lay down <laughs> in <laughs> the snow. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about, but like a fresh bank. Of, yes, <laughs> yes, snow angel. It doesn't look like that, but I know what you mean. <laughs> Have you heard about this? Have you seen this? Sorry, I'm just trying to get the comedy thing that seems to be in the precinct going. How come they never called them snowbirds? Would you like a signed so, copy of my book? It is very relevant to what we're doing right now. So now he decides, he's like, well, I guess I've got to go to Chimney Rock. And the corner's like, why? And he's like, remember the newspaper with the circle? They, it's, that's kind of where the whole movie is taking place. I'm right. going to have to head out there. And the corner's like, so, well, this scene seems out of order then, right? Like, why would you <laughs> find the newspaper and then go here and then go to Chimney Rock? This seems badly planned out. <laughs> right, exactly. I wanted to tell you about the snow angel thing. <laughs> So uh, we get a quick scene with um, Christopher Walken and and uh, Jerry, the dead guy, going through all the stuff from the precinct. He can't find the Bible. Jerry would like to die soon, please. But he can't die because Christopher Walken just needs him to do another podcast. I get it, Jerry. I get it. <laughs> He's a real bitch. <laughs> Tuesday, Friday, Monday records. When do you work in a suicide? But... <laughs> <laughs> but so here's the thing that like Jerry's supposed to be a suicidal guy that's going to hell. So like hanging out with Christopher walking him driving around, that's worse than hell. He's like, I'd really like to take hell over this. I don't I feel like I feel like I'd like to hang out with Christopher. Anyway. Yeah. I don't know. I've spoken <laughs> so, to several Uber drivers and they have said the same thing. They're like, oh, I can't wait to go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> you know what never happens in hell? Drunk girls throw up in your back seat. Never happens. <laughs> I feel like it does. I feel like it does. So, all right. So, him and Jerry, uh, Christopher Walken and Jerry, go driving together to go find the soul or something, and he smells something. Christopher Walken does because he's an angel. So they have to stop the car so he can go sniff out this graveyard with this dead general in it. Uh, by the way, crazy billionaire money. Gabriel Jerry road trip movie. Oh, that would have been so much oh, better. Jerry, we got to go to New York City. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Come on. <laughs> All right, Jerry, one stop at the water park, but I'm only going to perch. <laughs> <laughs> so, we don't know what the sequels have to offer. I'm just saying. Spoilers. So he, he uh, so they, they find this graveyard where they find the uh, the old guy. And so he lets the Jerry dig up the old guy while he perches on the on the uh, headstone. He shit squats. He's like he's yes. one hundred percent shitting. Like I think in real life he's like a method squatter. He's actually shitting. <laughs> the look on his face, so. Walken's enjoying himself, <laughs> shitting in his pants, crushing it. Yeah. So they get to he finally unearths the, the dead guy, the soldier guy from earlier. Opens up the coffin and uh, Gabriel starts freaking out. He's like, this is the most evil person that ever was anywhere in the world. And for some reason, that's helpful to me. He, yep. call, he calls him the cleverest, meanest, sickest talking monkey. Yeah. And this this will continue as his slur for humans, I guess. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just want him to pan over to General Thade. Hey, fuck you, man. <laughs> He's like, no, ridiculous. you're an ape. You're an ape. No respect. Ape. Not a monkey. So, <laughs> yeah, so, that, but that's why they're after this guy's soul, right? That's why this is the MacGuffin, because he's got the evilest soul in all the world. 
So Gabe goes to kiss it out of him, but he's already been kissed, and that's like chewing used <laughs> bubble gum, young ladies. Would you yeah. like to chew used <laughs> bubble gum? And th- th- this kiss is a bit. You know that awkward thing when you go in for the kiss uh, with a corpse, and you both go left, and then you both go right. <laughs> yeah, they do that. Yeah, they kind of do actually. <laughs> And this is where we get the best line in the entire fucking movie, in my opinion. Uh, he realizes that the soul is already gone. Somebody's gotten to this soldier guy before him. So he turns to Jerry, the zombie, and he goes, if you were a soul, where would you hide? And Jerry says, the hell away from you. Good fucking line. Comedy! <laughs> That's pretty good. Are we going to mung this guy or what? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, Let's get out of here. I did a lot of digging. <laughs> so yeah, now we, we have to cut over to Simon die crawling. Right, but Gabriel's found him apparently because now Gabriel is perched right over top of him. Yep. So he he tries his clever angel escape method, which is run away very suddenly. <laughs> but there was a plan for this before they even got there. Walker was like, "Jerry, all right, when he starts to run away, you trip him. That's why you're here. Can't you just like I don't know, set him on fire right away? Don't you do you, that? You have that power. No. We're going to see There's a, a second fucking archangel around here. You trip him. That's what you're here for." <laughs> I got a whole plan. <laughs> a lot of it like, involves our faces very close together. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Spoilers. Touchy feely. I have a touchy feely plan. So he says to Simon, he's like, where's the soul? And he says, it's, it's in a briefcase with two hitmen. We, we, we were also both in that one. That was just last year. Chris, remember? We were, we were in that Academy Award winning movie. Together. I feel like these are very similar films. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, should have been an Academy Award winning movie. It should have, yeah, yeah. So they're, they they're having this yelly gospel fight between the two of them. You know, like they're having that whole like God should have loved us more. No, he should have loved him more, and if you, but whatever. But they're ha- trying to have like a theological argument, and they're trying to deliver that like a raging, angry fight, and it's just as awkward as you would imagine. Except it's Christopher Walken, so it doesn't fucking matter. You could give him any line. He could be reading off the Denny's menu here. It wouldn't fucking matter. He's Christopher Walken. Oh, it's so good. Moon's over my hammy. <laughs> so. My hammy. So, <laughs> so eventually, like Eric Stoltz, Simon says, Oh, Gabriel, when did you lose your grace? And that's a bridge too fucking far, apparently. You can say what you want about him and his mama, but don't talk about his grace. Yeah. So he fakey burns him, and I thought, man, that's as good as we could do in 95, huh? <laughs> so that was, a, that was the limit to our technology, huh? Mm-hmm. Vultures of horror and this movie <laughs> on the same level. Yeah, they, they <laughs> basically they are, at least in this scene, yeah. So, or at least at, at the opening of the scene where he sets him on fire. So yeah, so he Torture burns Simon all night trying to figure out where he put that soul. Yeah. And then uh, a little more kissing. Yeah. After he burns his face off. I feel like the audition for this movie was just an hour of kissing stuff. Just like, all right, people, <laughs> some hands. Try try the table over there. You're perfect. <laughs> how does this generation get upset about how gay my generation is? How is that possible <laughs> that the generation that created prophecy is like, oh, pronouns are so confusing. I'm going to go watch that good old movie about Christopher Walken kissing every part of a man he can find. <laughs> I feel like the movie, I feel like a sex therapist just walked onto the set and started giving directions. Like, all right, now touch Walken's face. No, 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 tenderly, Ten- more tender, perfect, perfect. And maybe run your tongue over his eyeball. So, right. are you a director? Uh, yes, I'm a director. <laughs> I, I direct thing. I just directed you. He did stay Do at it. a Holiday Inn. All right, no, I'm doing it. Day. I was doing it. Um, yeah. So, so he he burns him all night. Um, tries to extort him, kisses him, and then pulls out his heart. Basically, it's a metaphor for all my high school relationships. <laughs> and then he dies. So with that, we, we cut to the teacher arriving at school the next day. But wouldn't you know it, there's a crispy dead guy up there. Yeah, and the cops are there. <laughs> and, she, and he's like, who was the last person talking to her? And she's like, oh, you think Mary tore out that guy's heart and then burned him? And he's like, uh, I'm a cop. I take this very seriously, except for the last scene when you talk to me. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, were there any students up here? She's like, Mary, she is the type 
you know, to burn a homeless person to death just to see him scream. I called you about this yesterday. You guys <laughs> didn't. All right. I feel like this is at least somewhat on you. <laughs> So she goes to check on Mary, obviously, because she was the last one to see the dead, burned, homeless guy. Uh, but <laughs> she's being treated by the hand trembler. <laughs> I would like to point out I'm the only one who didn't write a Michael J. Fox joke in, in, in their notes right here. <laughs> he is. He is. That's true. Uh, also, want to point out, pretty sure we're racist for not thinking what's going on in this scene is medicine, right? Like this is a... <laughs> We're supposed to like respect this for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the noises she's, That's not me. That's the lady. We walk yeah. in, and the teacher's not like, "Oh no, I need you to take her to a real doctor." And the grandma's like, "Oh, we took her to her doctor, and he didn't know what to do." Really? How long were you at the doctor's? I don't know. Ten, fifteen minutes. You know, they they, they they tend to check other stuff. Then you know, it's like, <laughs> nope, your daughter doesn't have any of the stuff. No, that's never happened at a doctor. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, and also, of course, this is where we see that the little girl's been drawing these violent uh, stick figure drawings. Yeah, she's got like a diagram of Columbine High School with a big A plus on it. Shows creativity. Cool. She's got the same drawings call the hand I did trembler. as a kid. Well, that's what I thought. Yeah, exactly. Real? So, <laughs> Fuck, you guys are great. Anyway. I, no, I thought that those were the drawings that Eli did as a so, kid. I was expressing Thomas is- myself. <laughs> it was hard growing up in Binghamton, guys. Yeah, no, I can the imagine. The carousel capital of the world. <laughs> Wait, what? There's yep. so much pressure it on you. It has the most carousels. <laughs> Fun fact. Look it up. It's the trivia nugget for today's show. None of y'all been um, as many carousels as I've been on. <laughs> I don't like to talk about it because I've been on so many carousels. They used to call me a stupid. That's the saddest claim to fame. For a city I've ever heard. We had a mass shooting, and we're the most depressed city in New York. Oh well, there you go. There you go. So nice. No, that says that it's pretty close to most depressed worldwide. So meanwhile, Thomas is driving through the desert, repeating lines from earlier in the movie because that's how policing works. Oh, Christian movie, huh? Or cop movie, yeah. yeah. So he's heading to the dead guy's grave, too, on account of the, that obituary that he found. Uh, but when he gets there, the grave digger is just ba- reburying him. Right. And he is very nonchalant about the grave robbery that happened last night. He's just like, oh, fuck. I'm not, I bet you're going to dig this guy up, too, right? You have any idea? I don't get paid overtime for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this man is quite price. inconvenienced by mortality, isn't he? Yeah, he's got a lot of important details. He might as well be just like bartending for nobody and digging a grave out there. <laughs> it's a couple of those characters in this movie. Yeah. So yeah, so the, the cops like, uh, when when was he buried? He's like, uh, just now. Also, a week and a half ago. You know, these fucking grave robbers always digging them up and fucking them. You know, you know how it is. <laughs> What's the? Have you heard about this? Have you seen this? What's the deal? No, no. Are you a cop? I used to be. Forty <laughs> second precinct. Forty second precinct. <laughs> oh shit! And so the the grave digger guy tells Thomas, he's like, "Yeah, the cops will be here whenever they're finished with that burned guy down at the school." And he's like, "Burned that guy down by the school? That sounds like my case." So like, why? <laughs> why? Like most almost every time, that's like drunk stone crackhead like caught himself on fire and couldn't smell it. <laughs> Just like. Jeff Goldblum, but with none of the steps in between, just like, oh, d- burn guy, I'm done. I made it. Virus to the aliens. <laughs> we'll send the virus. Aliens, a virus. So, yeah, so so he, he goes to the school, but then he's got to stick around and talk to the teacher to find out what she knows about the burn dead guy. And she is so unhelpful. He's like, hey, I'm a cop. And he, uh, I want to ask you some questions. She's like, oh, fuck, I'm too busy being the janitor and gym teacher. <laughs> There's literally a moment here where he's like, oh, can I talk to her parents? And he's like, and she's like, her parents are dead. She lives with her grandparents. Like, you knew what he, why are you doing the like, it's technically it's grandparent, grandparent. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, throughout this conversation, we learn at the end, Seawalks was perching above him the whole time. Always perching. A, B, P. Always be perching. <laughs> <laughs> so... So now Thomas has to go to check on the colonel's place. This is Colonel Hawthorne, the guy whose soul the angels are fighting off. And it would luckily he keeps his crate of incriminating evilness right under the bed 
So the scene doesn't have to take very long. Well, in the deleted scenes, there's actually arrows painted up the stairs to the bedroom. <laughs> this is where I keep my film of my cannibalism and murder. footprints or whatever that take you there. There's yeah. a bartender just being like, there's a big wooden box. Clues <laughs> straight under the bed. I don't know how I, I don't know much, but I know there's a big box of clues right there. Honestly, would have fit with the motif of his house, though. It was, it was a lot like walking into a bar I can't afford. I was just wiping oh. down this glass with a very clearly dirtier rag <laughs> so we would use clean rags we would use clean yeah rags. in a place like that maybe, maybe you rag, yeah so he was <laughs> so apparently this colonel was accused of human sacrifices in korea uh which is just killing people by the way um <laughs> just sounds scarier that way also he has a video reel um conveniently labeled evidence yeah uh, <laughs> it says that with with video of him eating and killing people <laughs> so like he was accused or like there's video yeah he, right because right. part of the black foot and white footage is literally a close-up of his mouth all covered in blood being like hey i love it 13 bones woo <laughs> just Heath behind him are you going to finish that yes I'm going to finish that Heath <laughs> <laughs> lower the meat it's in the shot so yeah it's it, basically it's a video of all the evil he eviled um, also video of his own court martial which was weird for him to clip that in too like home movies uh, this is me being court martial <laughs> this is our house say hi, hi mom <laughs> Uh, and a box of faces. Oh, yeah. He's also got a box of faces. Dead person skin masks like you do. I get it. Yeah. No, me too, honestly. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. So, after this, Thomas has to go to this immaculately gorgeous church. The fucking the town has a school with two classrooms and a lunch lady with polio, but it's got a fucking gorgeous, polished, everything's <laughs> brand new church. Town meeting. So should, they're just like, all right, first we fix up the church, then... We deal with the pipes, then we'll see about the school later. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, right. And then someone dies who is supposed to finish this list. So he sits down alone in a pew uh, because it's a Christian movie. And when he closes his eyes, he sees crazy angel wars again, like that other time. Yep. At the beginning of the movie. And then Christopher Walken shows up next to him. And okay, so I believe that there was an <laughs> argument among two different writers like this movie and another Christopher Walken movie of what is the silliest line that you can give Christopher Walken that he will still deliver awesomely? Because this is the part where he's like, you know how you get that little dent on your upper lip? You know, and he tells the old lady because Gabriel told you a secret thing, but it's fucking Christopher Walken, so it doesn't matter. It's awesome. <laughs> it's it's an awesome I told line. you a secret, and I went, shush, shush. <laughs> <And it's laughs> All right. Fucking perfect. <laughs> Scene's over. He might as well uh, yell cut and then walk away as the camera like <laughs> falls on its side. Pulls a, pulls the microphone clip <laughs> off the off of his fucking pants and just drops it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll be in my trailer making soup. Just points to three female extras. You, you, you. It's your lucky day. <laughs> One male extra. You two. <laughs> so, meanwhile, we uh, we get the little girl dreaming about Hawthorne evilness, right? So she's got that soul working around in her. Also, some lightning and apparently other weather patterns or something. Yeah, and, they, and they do this like slow pan up to the girl's face in slow mo. I really expected a skin mask of like hand trembler lady. Oh, that would be <laughs> awesome! Oh, that would be so awesome if she had just killed all the engines and shit and put them on stakes like the like. Yeah, no, that would have been good. They, yeah, they, this movie could have been better. Who who knows? You guys remember when right, Noah well, said engines? <laughs> I get it in my notes a lot. All right. Well, I'm on the edge of my seat here, but more because I need to piss than from the suspense. So we're going to pause for a quick break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will this little girl grow to Chinaman? Does Christopher Walken talk that way in everyday life, you think? What did the screenwriter want Eric Stoltz to have to do to get that Colonel soul before he settled on Kiss in the rewrite? Find out the answers to these questions and more. We return for the Vigo Mortensen containing conclusion of, that's right, he's still to come, people, The Prophecy. Hey, hey, welcome to the barbershop. How can I help? Hey, uh, just looking for a smooth shave. 
Yeah, so you signed up for Dollar Shave Club? Um, no. No, I came here to the barbershop. Isn't this the best way to get a great shave? Barbershop? Oh, you think going to a building filled with chairs and men of dubious training is the best way to shave your body? Well, when you put it that way, um, well, what's Dollar Shave Club then? It's a smarter choice. No need to schlep to the store to buy a cheap disposable razor that'll give you a cheap shave or spend a fortune on razors with gimmicky shaving tech you didn't need. Or in your case, trust a complete stranger with a razor near your throat. How's my day going? Did my wife leave me this morning? And was that the last straw? Who knows, right? Yeah, okay. That's, that's a good point. Um, but having razors delivered to your door, that's got to be crazy expensive, right? It's not, actually. However, having a full-grown adult shave you is. And really weird, if you think about it. Hmm. Like, yeah. No, no, you're right. Um, so how much is Dollar Shave Club? Well, for a limited time, new members get their first month of the executive razor with a tube of their Dr. Carver shave butter for only $5 with free shipping. After that, razors are just a few bucks a month. That's a $15 value for only 5 bucks. In your first month's box, you get an awesome weighty handle, a full cassette of four cartridges, and a tube of their shave butter. After your first month, replacement cartridges ship automatically at their regular price. No hidden fees, no commitments. Cancel anytime you like. But you can only get this offer exclusively at dollarshaveclub.com slash godawful. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash godawful. Wow, that seems a lot better. Um, Just one thing, are you going to use that same razor you just used on the last guy again? Oh, yeah, but don't worry. I dipped it in blue stuff. Man, is, is that... Is that how stuff works here? It is. It is. You got your tetanus shot, right? I did. Good. Still feel uncomfortable. Don't worry, it's blue. He. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Vigo Mortensen. Uh, no. Um, I'm. It's. It, I'm Satan, actually. Okay, I mean, you look like exactly like Viggo Mortensen. I, I know, I, I, I know, I look well, like from, Viggo. from Eastern Promises. The guy from yeah, saw it. Good movie. Why yeah. do you? What, I, I don't. Mean, I don't know, like, man. I don't know. I'm an angel. He's a good-looking dude. Some kind of joke from the big guys. Only so many faces. I don't know. It's just really? like, yeah. Don't even get me started yeah. on this. Oh, who's that? <laughs> yeah, him. Uh, sorry, this is my assistant, Alan. Uh, Roar, Alan. Roar. Sorry, he's new. Hi. Hi, Alan. Cool. Right. Okay. Thank you. Good note. Uh, so here's the thing. I need you to stop Gabriel. Uh, all right. Uh, who's Gabriel? <sighs> he looks like Christopher Walken. <laughs> Seriously? Look, man, I didn't do it, okay? I think he just likes uh, all right, all right, movies. All right. Fine. Why? Why, why do I need to... Okay, so there's Gabriel a war over humans in heaven, and if he wins, there will be, it, hear me out on this, two hells. Um, and, you know, can't be two hells. Really? Why yeah, I mean, I, I don't even know how we would split that up. Like, what, I'm going to get stuck with the rapists and murderers, and he gets Carl Sagan? That's bullshit, right? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, it's not like the eternal lake of fire's running out of space or anything. <laughs> exactly what Alan oh, said. What what do you say? Uh, some lateral management stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point too. Okay, I'm in. Um, lateral management though. Oh yeah, it's a whole thing. Have you read Who Moved My Cheese? <laughs> oh, ten minute manager is good too. <laughs> Hi, I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm No Illusions. And I'm Heath Enright. You know, this month's bonus episode is Triple X3, The Return of Xander Cage, a movie about Vin Diesel surviving falling out of a plane, being hit by a car, and Donnie Yen jumping nine stories through three layers of safety glass and being entirely fine. But what's most extraordinary is that movie made $346 million. And we want a piece of that. So if you haven't already, please go to patreon.com slash godawful and pledge as little as a dollar. Because this show is definitely better than Triple X3 Return of Xander Cage.
You'll get a commercial-free RSS feed of this show that you can listen to on any podcast player, plus access to all 12 of our bonus episodes, including Batman vs. Superman, Star Wars Episode One, and The Happening. But that's not all. Give us just five bucks a week, and you get your very own Christian movie bingo card shipped right to your door. Do you really love us? Pledge just 10 bucks a week and win free VIP tickets to all our live shows. But even if it's only a dollar, please reach deep into your heart and pledge at Patreon.com. Because we don't know much. But we know we deserve more money than Triple X3 Return of Xander Cage. <laughs> From the creators of God Awful Movies, The Scathing Atheist, The Skeptocrat, and Cognitive Dissonance comes a podcast that you can share with your uncle because it's not all atheisty. If you like God Awful Movies, if you liked Vulgarity for Charity, you will love Citation Needed. Now available on iTunes. It's like this show, except with Tom and Cecil, and the whole world is the movie. And we're back for the breakdown. And as we rejoin the action, yet another actor will be interacting with children in an uncomfortable way. This time <laughs> in the form of a bunch of kids sitting on Christopher Walken's lap. Yep. I don't know. Teaching them to blow a trumpet, checking their teeth doesn't seem weird to me. <laughs> yeah. Also, not a trumpet. I was it's wondering. A, it's a cornet. You <laughs> ignorant fucks. Gabriel's supposed to have a, Jesus Christ. Get one thing right. She's got a saxophone. Other than that, <laughs> they nailed it in this movie. Also, like the, the odds that that kid would be able to blow a trumpet on his first. Fuck you. I've Absolutely tried. Not. No, it's, it would make the. He's being yeah. guided by an angel. So, well, okay. You know. All right. No, I guess it makes maybe, sense now. Maybe so, Gabriel is like the destroyer of men and a great music teacher. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'd know what a trumpet and a cornet are differently. Conical board, different looking. It's very obvious. <laughs> so, he was a music. Grind your coffee in a trumpet. <laughs> All right, the so word conical applies to both. Of yeah, those. no, conical does in <laughs> burr enter and bore are different bore. words. That's yes, fine. No. Okay, so <laughs> this is such a deep cut. Like for the five <laughs> listeners that are following all of this, I love you so fucking much. Because the cornet oh. starts to flare from the beginning. For yeah, no, we to get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that and cornet. And also, your mom will crossover. love this bit too. He. <laughs> <laughs> My mom is a music teacher, and yeah, she does true. know the difference between a trumpet and a cornet. Exactly. And I'm she could have got that right. little kid to hit a note that would have broke that window on the first try, too. <laughs> she doesn't listen to this show. She does, actually. <laughs> she didn't appreciate your old lady right. impression. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, now that, now that we've gotten apparently our in-joke quote of... Uh, fulfilled for the C segment. <laughs> um, he's So we got Christopher Walken and he's there at the school checking to see which of these kids has the soul because he's like, yeah, I know Simon the angel. He's going to French kiss a kid if he has a chance to. So he starts checking all the kids for uh, extra souls, but because they, they stick out in your throat, you can just look into a mouth and see like the tip of the soul yeah, like coming out. Uvula, the, uvula and exactly. a, a soldier soul. It's right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Apparently, uh, but it doesn't matter because Mary's not there. Obviously, she's sick. But the little snitch girl tells Christopher Walken that Mary talked to the man upstairs. Yeah, and teacher lady comes over at this point, and for some reason, because he's not homeless, she is not okay with Christopher Walken talking to the kids. I don't know why, like, she reacts normally to this, but when a guy was bloody and in the attic, she was okay, you're fine. You're a ginger. Everyone knows they can't be pedophiles. <laughs> also, Name is a red-haired pedophile. Exactly. Is, also, is Impossible. it just me, or does she come to work dressed progressively sexier every day? She mm. sure does. Yeah, by Friday, she's just going to be an electrical tape and a butt plug. But um, she she tells the kids to go inside and, and gives them a, a good what for about having the kids on their lap. So he, Christopher Walken, sent her. Yeah. There is no other way to describe that. <laughs> he's just, honestly, he could have said or done. I don't remember what he said or did, but he's just like, oh, I'm a kitty cat. I'm a kitty cat. And I'm crawling away. And she's just like, well, that's. That's Christopher Walken. Um, <laughs> there's no way to react to that series of noises and actions. 
So I would like the scene to be over. Cut. You don't say cut. I say cut. (laughs) Fantastic. (laughs) Yeah. So and also Jerry's there. He's blowing bloody snot all over the place because, you know, he's wacky. (laughs) And Walken's like, oh, that's just Adam Goldberg. He has Ebola. Ignore him. It's fine. Yeah. (laughs) So, okay. So now, like, she's getting suspicious because... He, he, she knows he knows about Mary. Who the fuck knows? So she knows? abandons all the children in her care at the school and drives to Mary's place. Yep. And we get a we get like a Mary dual war criminal little girl <laughs> back and forth. Yeah, right, right. A Smeagol Gollum thing going on there. Um, yeah, Good kid actress. No, Strong. actually, actually, yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Um, so yeah, the, the teacher shows up, the cops already there questioning her and, you know, she's like, oh yeah, the man upstairs gave me a secret, but sometimes it hurts. And she's like, he's like, was it a penis? She says, it was a secret. (laughs) Secret. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, definitely a penis. (laughs) Basically her message here is I don't like having a war criminal inside me. It's a bummer. Right. (laughs) Well, and then, of course, she goes all war criminal, right? And she turns to him. She goes, ever cut off a Chinaman's head? You know, blah, 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 blah. To to which her grandmother is like, she never talked about Chinaman head before. This is. Yeah, no, I've never heard her talk about decapitating (laughs) that ethnicity. It's so weird. And they do bleed like we do. That's not even accurate. (laughs) They they bleed approximately the same. Weird that she would say that. He accounted for the fact that it could have been the cold. It's less viscous in the cold. So yeah, so the 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 teacher is getting <laughs> suspicious at this point uh because, you know, of all of the Chinaman head cutting talk and whatnot. So she turns to the cop and she's like, "Can you tell me the truth?" And he's like, "Do you ever read the Bible, Catherine?" She's like, "So no." <laughs> Damn it. Well, she goes, "I read it a long time ago." And I'm like, "No. No, no you haven't." <laughs> no, you didn't. There's there's two <laughs> reactions to have you read the Bible. No, which is the honest one, and oh my god, yes. It took like nine years and all. Do you have you read numbers? It's just numbers. You know, it's, I, it's honestly, it's on me. It's on me for thinking there would be non numbers in there. I just want to point out that that's one of those mistakes. People who haven't read the fucking Bible. Numbers has a talking donkey in it. Numbers is amazing. No, it's all numbers. No, it doesn't no, remember. It's he's not old. even it's remotely all numbers. All numbers. That's that's it's that's what happens numbers. when you read the first three fucking chapters and give up. Is you think it's all numbers? You miss the chalking donkey and shit. Now no one's embarrassed. It's got a fucking. It's got a formula on how to make uteruses <laughs> fall out with dirty floor water and he shit. Was it's distracted. By numbers a is amazing. Clucker. I wrote and a, a poem about it. <laughs> so what is happening? <laughs> I'm coming to numbers defense. It's the most <laughs> underrated book in the Pentateuch. God damn it. <laughs> Now, Deuteronomy, now that's some shit right there. She's like, hey, remember those first four books? No? Good. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so so he tells her he tells her that angels are coming to war on planet Earth. And she's like, Yeah, no, I get it. That makes sense. Sure, sure. And she's In like, In fact, ooh. I probably saw one this morning. <laughs> yeah, her thing is like, ooh, 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 that reminds me. I think I saw Gabriel this morning. You know, the <laughs> angel, Gabriel. I should have mentioned him. But you were talking about whether Chinaman bled, and I got sort of caught up in that. I was trying to picture it, like what it would look like for them to bleed. Just, I'm sorry. Anyways, yeah, I saw Gabriel this morning. <laughs> so, so yeah, and she's like, he's like, mm, I have to find him, and she's like, I know where he is, and he's like, really? Why would you know that? She's like, it off camera at some point. I learned this information. They yeah. probably should have included a scene about it or well, something. As she's but, driving, she sees the car. Oh, is that what it yeah. is? Okay, so yeah. yeah, so she knows what abandoned mine he's in. Yeah. And yeah. I just, I picture Christopher Walken walking around with like a New York style real estate agent looking for hideouts. You know, I need something that can be creepily walked through with a flashlight. Do you have, so I, you know, normally I'm in a city, there's a subway, something like that. <laughs> I want to go where Noah's going camping in Australia. Can I hide out there? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> he's going to be camping. So, yeah. how about a mine? <laughs> yeah, right. So that's what they settled on. And of course, like all creepy places in movies, this has wall scrawlings. As soon as you mm-hmm. get a creepy place, you have to start scrolling shit on the walls of it or it won't look legit when the cops show up. Yeah, and they claim this is angelic script, but 
it's got like Greek math stuff and boobs and cocks and balls. Like, really? Angelic script? And Guys, all go those find a fucking Anakian dictionary. Those Somebody actually Sigma. made that shit up once. You might as well use it. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, and, and then, of course, the, the lamp suddenly comes on all by itself. That's always some creepy hell shit going on there. Right. And the wall turns into a, a big screen TV from angelic gladiators apparently yeah so they look over and there's an impaled angel an angel on a on a like vlad the impaler stick um very unrealistically claymationing around just <laughs> reminding us why we needed the cgi so fucking bad right, and there's a field of them too they all got well, impaled <laughs> Exactly. I wanted one to just like have his calf impaled to be like, ah, oh, oh yeah. I am, I'm also in pain, guys. Look what happened to me. Oh. It's like a paper oh. cut on the side. Uh, well, it's yeah, worse though, because I can move around. Ah. But it's at, but, at, but of course that I, would I require for this to be a moving image and not just a drawing of impaled well, angels. Yeah, there we're in a mine shaft and then it's like he swiped over to a new picture on a phone and we're in this like other giant field out of nowhere. It makes, yeah, well and then he again throw- it's a picture of God's boobs. Oh, <laughs> sorry. No, that's just from a different <laughs> Well, yeah, but instead he throws uh, the lamp against the wall and it explodes and it turns back into a wall. So. So that's what I plan to do from now on when I'm not enjoying one of these movies. Yeah, exactly. Ah! Kerosene lamp at the screen. Yeah. (laughs) And of course. There will be a fire. (laughs) (laughs) So they said this. So they head outside and and now she is 100 percent buying the I am an angel cop thing. Um, and she's like, you know, what, what is he after? And he goes, he wants something, something that's here. Yeah. I mean, he probably isn't here for something that's not here. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> right. And you see him say the line, he goes, the angel wants Mary. And you see him like recognize like, oh, oof. yeah. <laughs> so they head to Mary's place, but wouldn't you know it? Gabriel is already there. Mm hmm. And they scuffle. Yeah, Jerry gets involved. You know, he <laughs> comes in and tackles uh, Thomas and everything, and, and and Gabriel takes care of the chick for a minute anyway. Right, and then he shoots Jerry, and and Gabriel gets mad because apparently suicidal people are like angel Pokemon. He's like, oh, oh now <laughs> I gotta go get a new one. <laughs> one. <laughs> Spoiler alert: He is literally gonna go get a new one. He does. And this is where we get to the weird, like, uh, physics of angels. They're not bulletproof, but it doesn't kill them. But they don't but it, heal? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, but if you, <laughs> if you... Well, you have to throw them out of a window by their eyes after stabbing them in the neck with broken glass and then hit them with a car. I feel like that works, though. Right. Um That, as I understand it, works out just fine. But yeah, so yeah, Gabriel's crazy pissed because because Jerry's dead. So he throws the the Thomas out of the trailer that they're in, and then he like you know Christopher Walken walks his way out. The chick is shooting at him, and she's not shooting at him. No, she's she's shooting in every other direction besides. Might as well try her own head once and like (laughs) doesn't go anywhere. She blows up the propane tank. Well, right. Yeah, right. Exactly. She hits the shoot here to make trailer explode part of the fucking trailer that they all have. Mm -hmm. Um, So it explodes. Right. You know that bullet gap that propane tanks have? So in case you want to blow them up. Yeah, exactly. It's like the Death Star. (laughs) Yeah. Used to hunt womp rats in the... (laughs) Only one exhaust part? Come on, that's a great <laughs> building. So, how y'all motherfuckers gonna blame me? You got a hole the size of a womp rat is the only way to destroy a thing is a kid with magic. I mean, other people have pointed this out, but you got a magic kid directs it. He's cheating. He's talking to the dead. He does a no look. I'm just, it's not the engineer's fault. He did a fine job. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like they could have put a turn in it. Like, you know, like a 90 degree turn. Yeah, Somewhere. maybe, but I don't know. So, One exhaust part for a planet-sized spaceship? <laughs> if you need a straight out, that's pretty we fucking know, great. We don't know that that's, that's, we don't know that that's the it. only exhaust port. It's just the only exhaust port without a 90-degree fucking angle in it anywhere. 
So the trailer blows up and they, they, and they sort of have like the false, oh, we won kind of a moment, whatever. But Thomas isn't buying it. The cops show up after the explosion and he's telling them to cuff the corpse of Gabriel that was in the explosion because he's sure he's still alive. Right. The cops react to that by like, okay, you, like a dad checking <laughs> under the bed, like no monsters here. Yeah. All right. Dead angel here. <laughs> <laughs> but then Mary, again, channeling the racist, dead colonel guy. The racist demon soul or whatever. Yeah. The colonel soul. Yeah. It actually pays off. She's like, yeah, Catholic angels are shift. You got to cut their hearts out and like eat them or something. Why would he know that? Well, Right? Like, like, oh, he's such a good war criminal that he knows how to kill angels. Anyway, yeah. So they're like, yeah, you get, no, it only counts if you cut out their heart. And I so wanted him to go to bring the cop back. Okay, this is going to sound weird. Um, Hear me out. Crazy, crazy thing. <laughs> Mary, you were okay with the cuffing. <laughs> Mary, this channel is not the nice really colonel weird. for the man. <laughs> also, so they, so they throw his, Gabriel's corp, handcuffed corpse into the uh, police car. And just as they're about to close it, he opens his eyes and looks over at Thomas like, aha, I'm going to fuck with you. And I'm like, that doesn't, that works against your plans, but whatever. He, he oh, winks at him. And he winks. He winks it. He does. So good. Sploosh. I literally shuddered and moaned it's a like little. like Sarah Palin. Oh. Amazing. Mm, coming yeah. right in the back with me. So, <laughs> so they follow in, in the teacher's trunk. Uh, mm, knowing did you that say Sarah Palin? That is strong. You just. Put a really cool image in my head, walking and Sarah Palin. Oh yeah, there you go. <clears throat> so winking at each other back and forth. Yeah, it would be awesome. So they they follow behind the cop car and the teacher's truck, and wouldn't you know, they come across the cop car's been destroyed all to fuck. He's like killed him and overturned the car somehow from the back seat. Um, but they're heading to a to a Native American ritual. Apparently, Native American. I learned in the uh, uh, interstitial is the term I'm supposed to use now that engine is not good anymore. <laughs> uh, because apparently Native American magic defeats Catholic magic or doesn't. I think it doesn't ultimately. Yeah. But it, it seems like they're just like doing the touch the kid's face ritual. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much all they got. <laughs> so <laughs> they, they every character in this movie touches this kid's face uncomfortably though. Yeah. They show and they're like, Oh, you, you guys here for the hand trembler? No, we're putting an oil pipeline in. Yeah, the fucking hand trembler, obviously. <laughs> we're trying to fix this girl. <laughs> Jesus. Too soon, noon, 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 soon, noon, noon. So, what the fuck? Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, but when I say oh, engine, it's a really far. big deal. That was too far for you. Jesus. So, <laughs> so yeah, so they, they they go in and start chanting at the... Ch and and the, I wrote, I'm writing in my notes, wow, all religious stuff looks equally stupid to me. It's all the same amount of stupid... With different styles and rhythms. Well, they ramped yeah, it up. I, they ramped it up. It was the hand tremble, but now it's the maracas with it. There's, they're, you know. Well, yeah, yeah. No, they've they've put right. in some 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 doing bass. the real thing now. Yeah, no I like more the baby aspirin. Yeah. <laughs> so now Gabriel heads to the hospital for no for no reason that I can track in this movie to get himself a new dead person. Yeah, this makes like you're killing people constantly. Yeah, right. So yeah, he has to go fetch him a just dead person from the ICU and he comes across a good critically ill person who also was in Pulp Fiction and he's like oh yeah no we know each other <laughs> oh that was Honey Bunny right yeah right. yeah exactly yeah. exactly he's literally just seeking out his old castmates yeah apparently he's like remember last year we were in a better passes place? by a bed with Tim Roth in it no no <laughs> <laughs> yeah I like how they use the clipboards in the scene though clipboards are like the bartender of hospital scenes right yeah <laughs> Just like pan over a bartender's like, next room's Terry Schiavo. She's perfect. That's who you want. You got it. <laughs> Prophecy five. He's just in the back of a cab. So you can get these anywhere. Yeah, man. <laughs> when do you die? I, I don't know. I just, this is my job. You're a weird customer. <laughs> <laughs> I bet Christopher Walken hears that a lot. Uh, meanwhile, back at the chanting, they're still chanting. So teacher walks out possibly unconvinced that they're chanting chantily enough and that's where she meets Vigo Mortensen <laughs> finally yep. now I, I want to oh. point out like that when, when he shows up he was absolutely no one when this movie came out so like the idea that you would save Aragorn for like late in act three like this seems kind of weird now but he was like an absolute nobody at this point 
Oh, Although, and he's so good. Oh my God, does he go for he crushes it? it. Yeah, he and he <laughs> he enters this conversation like every stranger that messages my wife on Facebook. He's like, "Hey, can we talk?" And she's like, "Eh," and he's like, "Or I can lay you out and fill your mouth with your mother's feces, like <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want to do." Actual words. Don't screen cap this and share it <laughs> because that makes you a bitch for some reason. Yeah, right. I oh. can lay you out and fill your mouth with your mother's feces, or we can talk. Literally exact a, words. Do you have a bag of my mother's feces? Yeah. yeah. Do you have a bag of everyone's mother's feces? Like, is that, yeah. is that a satanic power that you discovered? Like, you were just like, oh, I wish I had Dave's mom's shit right now. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at that! Oh, tell me you're too busy for a meeting. Flashback to See, Viggo Mortensen scooping the shit out of an old lady. I did not think this through. I did not. <laughs> This is a weird gambit that I give, and it this backfired this one time. They always say talk, except them, then somebody said not talk. Then I went to Eli, and he's like, you know what? <laughs> Honestly, hold on. Hold on. I'll teach Andrew I to miss our conference calls. <laughs> 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 so also, also, did Lucifer bring stained glass face guy from Burning Hell? His assistant. <laughs> he yes. has a growl assistant. <laughs> he's just, rawr, and he's like, what do you what is that guy that he's taking notes to rawr? Rawr, rawr. <laughs> rawr, 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 rawr. Shut up, Malthus. So we rawr. growl at the end. <laughs> I hate you're the worst. Rawr, 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 rawr. Yeah, that so was she... um hostile work environment in Demon. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Rawr, 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 rawr. Shut up. <laughs> So yeah, so he's got to do some <laughs> exposition here um, to explain to her that he's not on Gabriel's side in this war, uh, but he delivers this monologue. It, it It is such a bizarre choice, series of choices that he makes for Lucifer. It works. It totally fucking works. But, you know, down to like eating a flower, singing part of his lines. <laughs> he eats a he flower. Do you think that was like a direction or did he just improvise that? Like, was it in the script? Like, eat flower menacingly right here. <laughs> you are Lucifer, the Prince of Darkness. I think Baby Vigo was like, look, I'm in a movie with Walken, so there are no rules. I'm going to go for Satan <laughs> as gay guy eating a flower. <laughs> so, might as well. Yeah. So, okay. So what we learn here is that Satan... <laughs> he just puts the flower in his mouth, pulls out a bone. <laughs> So what we're learning here is that Satan is um, like on God's side here, because if Gabriel wins his war against heaven, then there will be two hells instead of one heaven and one hell. And that's too many hells, because then it would be hard to explain where people were, who the fuck? It, it doesn't matter. You're in hell too. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I in hell also? Is that what you meant? Ever? No. Everyone, put your hands down. Okay. <laughs> there are now two hells, no heavens. So it really, honestly, this is not on you anymore. Just, <laughs> and it's the same. It's not a different hell. They're just two match. I don't want to get into. Everybody, it. read the FAQ. We'll reconvene. <laughs> this feels. We're wasting yeah. time. Yes, girls throw up in your backseat here. I'm tired of explaining this. <laughs> so, yeah, so, but Vio Mortensen explains to her that, like, the, the reason that the angels need this uh, colonel soul is because they need to find the most evil, warlike person to help them win the war. And I'm like, I feel like you can just watch. Right, you guys perch like motherfuckers. Like what? Like what? Is there really something about being evil that you'd have to be taught? Like oh, but okay, but how do I shoot him evilly? I don't know. I, I'm asking Eli. Is there something about being evil that you have to be taught? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. gotta learn it. It's like a six it, week course. They have it at Phoenix. It's like an online thing. You do it in your <laughs> spare time. It's great. Use our code Phoenix.com. Yes. Forward slash. <laughs> If ever there was an advertisement for Trump University. And also, they never like specifically call him Lucifer in this scene. They say he says, I was the first angel. And then he makes it extraordinarily clear. But then we immediately cut to this useless scene afterwards where she's talking to Thomas and she says, I saw the devil tonight. And that is, I guarantee you, because the test audiences didn't figure that out. Oh, wait, who was the first angel? Shit. <laughs> I thought that was, was that Michael? Is he Michael? I wanted him to be like, so... 
How was it? And she's like, good. You ever see Eastern Promises? No, not made yet. All right. Well, good. Smaller than you thought. Good. Subtle. <laughs> so now Satan and his new dead body friend stop for some diner food. And I just want to say, since this is entirely driving based, I would have loved a scene where Gabriel gets tired of having to like bring people back to life. And so he decides to just convince one of those people to teach him how to drive. So they're just like, okay, mirror to mirror. You're making me nervous. You're making me. No, it's just mirror <laughs> to mirror. And now bring your wheel all the way around. All <laughs> the way around. I can't see. You know, you want the door handle to be you touching. Can't, you can't perch. You're going to need your feet for the pedal. Stop perching. <laughs> Stop the, I the perch seat when belt won't I work. perch when I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we cut to Thomas setting something up. What will it be? Perhaps we'll find out soon. Um, when the devil shows up to also talk to him. Now, I want to point out that yeah, the, the devil shows up like he enjoys his podcast, just like, oh, <laughs> Gun, 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 gun. Eli gets strangely accosted by our fans sometimes. <laughs> I would like a new character. <laughs> so, who people don't touch. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so Vigo didn't want him feeling left out, so he shows up and he starts squeezing his boobs. It's a super touchy, feely kind of a all, thing. All the magical characters were doing Molly this whole movie. Guaranteed. <laughs> oh, that makes a lot of sense. I thought Satan was about to start glow sticking for Tommy. Just like <laughs> blowing menthol up his nose. Yeah. They, t- they turn and he's just spinning poi. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, you weren't supposed to see this. <laughs> so also, okay, so this is where I, I guess Satan is showing up to explain to Thomas what his like what Gabriel's weakness is. And his weakness is not having faith, having faith. Anyway, faith is the angel's weakness. This will play out in the dumbest possible way. Will, but, it, uh, will it play out? Well, in, in the dumbest possible way. Yes, exactly. He'll say the word faith when he's trying to save his life later. And now, according to Noah's notes, it's time for some next level engine magic. <laughs> Back in my day, that's what the word was. I don't know why we got to use Tom Sawyer, brand new the host of the show. pronouns or something. I don't get it. Okay, so, yeah. Now, so, of course, Gabriel is still smell stalking his way behind him. And it, it, they even show a scene where, like, he found candy on the side of the road. So he, like, steps out, sucks on it, and, and finds out that it was hers. Really? How often does that go wrong? The little girl leaves a trail of candy behind her. <laughs> like, I get it, because that's how we find Heath when we lose him in malls and stuff. But that, I thought that was just a Heath thing. I don't. I very find a little... rarely would leave that much of a Twizzler behind, though. Yeah, you right? would, you'd need to be looking closer. That was like half a Twizzler. Yeah, so, and of course, while he's doing this, they're just chanting the fuck at her, but it still doesn't seem like she's cured. They must need to chant... Syncopated? I don't know. There is whatever it is. They're not doing. Hey, can it. you do those maracas in like cut time? Let's double it up. Two, three, four. <laughs> hurry up. We got the guy coming. Hi, the- yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, yeah, yeah. Come on, people, get on it. So now Thomas is standing outside, like watching for the evil angels to show up. I tells the teacher, you know, here, take the gun, go inside, hide, tell him to chant faster, whatever. Um, right, so I'm going to he- hold off Gabriel by making him play tic tac toe against himself. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> Well, first he has to set up his, he has to use his awesome car trip wire, right? That's what he was setting up when the devil showed up. Big chain thing that like kills whoever comes by in a car. Good thing it happened to be the devil. I mean, the Gabriel. Yeah. Right. Like as if (laughs) anybody else was just driving down there. Native American. Yeah. Right. Late to the ceremony. (laughs) Oh, I'm missing them. Oh, fuck. Now the worst thing is I can't reuse this on Gabriel now because your car is here. Ugh. Fuck. Well, and he's probably going to bring you back to life, make you drive him later. I'm sorry for all of this. It's a whole <laughs> thing. Yeah. So, but, but luckily it is Gabriel. So he throws this chain up in front of the car and, and Christopher Walken flies out of the car and it looks like the honey bunny dies, but she doesn't. That'll be important. Yep. And basically Christopher Walken just shows off how silly a line he can still deliver awesomely. This is where he starts throwing down about how like in heaven you get all the ice cream you want yeah he's yeah. pitching heaven based on ice cream bedtimes and killing 
<laughs> and it's any god, goddamn again. This was a contest between writers. Like no, I mean, no. Look at this line. No, he's gonna fair, kill it. He did super capture this podcast. I'm just saying, ice cream bedtimes and killing. That's three signups in a row <laughs> from this particular cast. It's like a stepdad trying to bribe an eight year old. Like ice cream, no curfew. You want to kill a homeless guy? What baseball cards? <laughs> Yeah, so he's about to kill, Gabriel's about to kill Thomas for getting in his way, and this is where he pulls out his ace in the hole. He says, faith, 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 and Gabriel's like, fuck, man, damn, now I gotta get all bummed and not uh -huh. kill you yet for some reason. Yeah, his answer is, why don't you just ask God, and he's like, uh, we kind of broke up it's it's awkward because we have a lot of mutual friends still and it's like you know <laughs> I, I don't want to be the guy that asks if god's gonna be at the party but i don't want to run into god at a party never calls me or texts me anyway maybe he's just busy i don't know probably lots of hours whatever i had yeah, a funny super. story to tell god <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so he bums around about how god doesn't talk to him anymore and decides not to kill thomas now and instead he just sniffs away after the evil soul um so thomas jumps in the truck and drives after him but honey bunny is in the back of the truck and attacks him why yeah. would she do that it doesn't make any sense no. anyway so gabriel makes it to the little girl ceremony and Rachel shoots him, and that doesn't work. So he goes to Skull Smasher, but luckily, just at that moment, Thomas drives his truck through the building <laughs> and manages to hit Christopher Walken and no one else in this crowded little building. Not even the person Christopher Walken is holding by the eyes. Oh, it's so good. It's like a Ford truck commercial that got censored. Like the F-150, enough torque to... Blast through even the toughest wigwams. No, oh, you Jesus can't. Christ. Nope, we're not doing that. <laughs> you feel like afterwards they were all sitting around and it was like, wow, really lucky that you didn't get anyone else. What a great plan. Yeah. No, I totally <laughs> knew that. I knew which side you guys were on. I mean, I just want yeah, to point out all, that I knew you guys I were going I listened gonna... for the chanting and I aimed for the not chanting. <laughs> <laughs> what if he had been chanting? Why would he be chanting? That's, you're silly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah so he jumps out of the truck starts hitting Gabe with a tire iron hits him maybe half a dozen times but then Lucifer shows up and says alright enough with the violence enough violence let's put back on the chanting it was nice yeah. and if you were wondering if Vigo Mortensen was going to lick Christopher Walken yes oh yeah yep right now They're gonna why would you even a wonder weird at this point? bite fight and the only way I can describe <laughs> it is this you ever have friends who should break up but it's obvious that they like like to fight because it makes their fucking better. And it's late in the relationship, so they do it in front of people. And everyone's <laughs> kind of aware at this point because they've told separate people like how great the sex is after they fight. But they do it at like game night. So you're just like, ah, you're doing your thing. But I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy uh, hanging out with you and Anna. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're saving ourselves <laughs> for my death. <laughs> September 26th. <laughs> Happy <laughs> birthday to me. So, wow. Gabe I think we're legally <laughs> obligated to be like, are you serious? Don't help me. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, if I man. was in serious trouble, I would vague book about it on Facebook. Yeah, come on, people. All right, so Gabe shit talks Lucifer. Lucifer <laughs> pulls out his heart. I just, I, 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 I don't, I don't know what I'm going to be editing from, so I have to like, I don't remember necessarily where that all started. So yeah, so, so I just have to kind of jump in sometimes. Not talking about suicide. As, Let's move on to this yeah. next thing that happened. And well, right now, now because Gabe is done, Mary can puke up the genocidal colonel. Yeah, and she swells up like Arnie's on the surface of Mars for a second. Yep, yep, exactly. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. It was the best we could do back then. And I love, too, that after this happens, right, a demon flies out of her mouth and catches on fire and Satan's there and everything else. After it's all done, all the Native Americans are like, yeah, we, with our magic, just did that. That's how these, that's how these go, right? Crazy billionaire remake. I want one person to just start 
Thomas Smith style screaming at the very end of that. Just like, ah, ah, what the fuck was that? What the fuck was? Ah, ah, did you guys fucking see that shit? Ah, ah, no one is affected by this at all. Amazing. And then Satan eats Christopher Walken's heart a little bit mm-hmm. and comes on himself a little, it looks like. Yeah. And then, then he like, then like the drunk friend who doesn't want to admit he's too drunk to drive himself home. He's like, you guys want to come over? You guys want to come over? It's like, Dude, just catch an Uber. Look, no one wants you to come back and get your car, but look, we're behind it now. It's all happened. So don't, no, watch some DVDs. No, it's 1995. So that's appropriate. But no, we're all just catching oobs. I thought, ah, come honestly, on, we never hang out. <laughs> I honestly thought what we were going for here was that he had eaten Christopher Walken's heart so he gets his overacting ability. <laughs> because, again, this is where he goes off on his whole, like, where like Satan tries to tempt them and he has his whole, like, I love you more than Jesus moment, which is <laughs> amazing. So good. <laughs> it's so amazing. Uh. Is, that's the second best scene in the movie right there. Um, and then it ends on, again, great fucking line. Like he's talking to the cop and the cop goes, I have my soul and I have my faith. What do you have, fallen angel? And he's like, I'm Satan and you're shit talking me, you dumb fuck. You know what? Hey, check that. Check your pocket. That's your mom's shit. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> I can put that anywhere I, I want. a bag full of your mom's shit is what I have, motherfucker. Fuck your mouth. <laughs> I did not oh, pick the my mom's shit of spades. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> it did now. So yeah, and then he Satan walks off and turns into birds before it was cool. Way before it was cool. Yeah. And then everybody Christianity happily ever after. I guess. And this ending monologue is just uh, you could someone ran in here with a shotgun and put it to the back of my head right now and was like, wrap up the movie philosophically. <laughs> oh, well, having a soul is so much like the, uh, the knowing a plan. Bird faith. is the word. And maybe that's the whole <laughs> I learned something here today. The end. Even if faith Credits. makes no sense because you can't shit. Hold on. <laughs> here, I'll, I'll I'll kiss the girl so that we know it's over. God's yeah. plan is based no, on our relationship. That is stupid. Yeah, what? Uh, in the end, uh, hum- being human is all about Native American. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. If me and Heath started kissing at the end of this episode, it would make more sense than the romance in the last four seconds of this movie. Oh my god! Okay, as much as I love this, I, I will. I, I have to fess up to that flaw. The cop and the teacher have as much chemistry as a homeopathy clinic, but at the end of the fucking movie, they just start kissing for no fucking reason. Like, all right. So, as a person who okay's Eli's knows, I know a needed rewrite when I see one. So, I, I wanted to close this movie off by asking you guys exactly that: which two characters? should have fallen in love at the end of this flick. Oh, um, I'm going to say Lucifer and Hand Trembler. Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, After he gets shot one. down by Tommy and Catherine at the end, he just looks over. Ah? <laughs> ah? <laughs> know your lane? Let's go home. Let's get out of here. Uh, uh, little girl and the angel. Simon? Like a romantic... Yeah, little girl and Simon. Like a romantic comedy. <laughs> I was thinking check. Jerry and Honey Bunny. I'm surprised nobody went Jerry yeah. and Honey Bunny. You guys remember Zombie Blank Check had that <laughs> love story between a full-grown adult and a rich child? No. <laughs> Just me? No. Blank Check. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And well, that's going to do it for our review of The Prophecy. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to convince you that it's going to get worse from here. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. The Prophecy 2. Oh. That was intended to be a theatrical release at first. Walkins in three of these, or four of these, maybe. Three of them, three? yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. In three I believe of these. three. Yeah. yeah, well, you know what? I've never seen this one. Would be 0% surprised if it was fucking awesome. Indeed. 
So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 92 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, The Skeptocrat, and Citation Needed, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcasts were provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Rachel, the zombie, became an Uber driver because internships don't pay. The birds that Vigo Mortensen turned into went on to murder Brandon Lee. Christopher Walken never realized they made three movies about that summer. <laughs> <laughs>